Hey guys, it is me, Jacqueline, for today's video. I have a non-spoilery series review for the Remnant Chronicles series by Mary E. Pearson. The first book part of this series is The Kiss of Deception. I actually first read this book two years ago when it first came out and I loved it. I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. This is actually a really great first book, so it will take you on this epic journey as you continue on with the others in this series. The second book a part of the series is The Heart of Betrayal. I read this a couple of days ago. It actually came out last year. I yet again very much enjoyed it. I actually enjoyed it more than the first book. I gave this a 5 out of 5 stars. I loved all the twists and turns in this book. The third and final book a part of this series is The Beauty of Darkness. I actually gave this book a 4.25 out of 5 stars. Later on in this review I will explain that very odd rating but I loved the ending of this series and this is one of my favorite series so I'm very sad over the fact that it is finally over. I want to actually thank, before I get into the main part of this review, Macmillan and Epic Reads because they sent me a finished copy of The Beauty of Darkness as well as a paperback copy of the first two books a part of this series. I was actually sent these books in exchange for an honest review because I am a booktube tour host and I will leave all the information down below as well as actually there is a little bit of a readathon going on so you want to check out that hashtag if you want to use it on different social medias. So yet again I do want to thank Macmillan and Epic Reads so much and anyway let's get on to this review. Since this is a non-spoilery trilogy review let's get on to the synopsis of the first book. So what exactly is this book about? This is a YA fantasy book in which we follow our main character named Leah and she is 17 years old and she's actually a princess. She discovers she is betrothed to a prince in another kingdom and she does not like that idea at all. She's never actually met this person and she sort of wants to take her life in her own hands and she wants to marry for love. So she decides to actually escape and run away with her best friend. As Leah and her best friend find this secluded town, they actually don't know that there are two people that are following them. One is the prince that she was actually betrothed to, and the other is an assassin hired to kill her. As she adjusts to the new life in the secluded town, two mysterious people come through the town, and yet again, one is the assassin and one is the prince, and a little bit of a mystery aspect comes into play because we as the readers don't know which one is which. The reason I did give this book a 4.5 out of 5 star is because I did find the beginning a little bit slow for me but yet again I loved it overall so even though I did give it a 4.5 out of 5 stars that is not a bad rating at all. And then with the second book I gave this a 5 to 5 stars because honestly I think this was such a strong second book. Usually I find that second books sort of lack, maybe they're a little bit slower, slower build, but for me I just really felt that this instantly grabbed my attention. The first book you sort of leave off with anticipating more and sort of wanting more and so I love the fact I got to reread the first book and then I immediately had the second. I feel like this series is an awesome series to marathon because each book sort of flows into the next one. Honestly, I think this book is my favorite though because we got a lot more of different aspects like the world building and the character development. There was just so much more compared to the first book and that's why I gave it a higher rating. Now the third book I gave a very interesting and different rating. I gave it a 4.25 out of 5 stars because I did love it. I love these characters and I think that this was such a massive book. And I actually read this book from 3 a.m. to 10 a.m. That's 7 hours, 688 pages. I don't know how I did it or what like possessed me to do it. Well, pretty much I woke up in the middle of the night and I was like, oh, let me just read a little bit. Maybe that will help me fall asleep. Nope did the opposite and I stayed up all night just to read this book because it just had my full attention. There were certain little things that made me laugh and I was crying at some parts. I just felt that I was so emotional and that is a very positive sign when it comes to a book or a series because when you're completely invested into something that sort of shows that I have a lot of passion for it and it sort of has my heart and this series does have my heart. I feel so connected with these characters 
And yet again, I keep saying this, but I am so sad over the fact it is over because I don't want to say goodbye to them. I am completely satisfied with everything. I think the ending sort of wrapped up things nicely. And the reason I gave it such a weird rating is because these characters sort of were acting a little bit weird in this book, in my personal opinion. I felt that certain actions they did, and I'm not calling out like a certain character. I'm just saying overall, there were some things that some characters did and I was just sort of giving them a little bit of side eye because it didn't really seem like them, but I loved it so much. So I do have to give it that same higher rating. I felt like a four wasn't enough, but I did feel like the first book was a little bit better for me because just the characters and their actions really bothered me. Another thing I loved about this book was how I sort of saw different things that reminded me of this book. I'm not going to say what or how or whatever. If you have read this book, you understand what I'm talking about. Now let's talk about the pros and cons for this series. So let's first talk about why I love this series so much. This is a very character and world driven series. I love my characters, you guys know this, and I really do enjoy these characters. I love the fact we get to see them grow and develop throughout this entire series, and it's so evident the fact these characters grow, and I love that factor. And with the characters, I want to quickly talk about the love triangle. Love triangle isn't really a pro or con for me, just because you guys know love triangles aren't my favorite thing in the whole entire world. But I do have to say, I didn't find this love triangle was too forced upon. Honestly, I sort of had one person in mind I wanted her to end up with and she did end up with the person I had in mind from the very beginning so I wasn't really disappointed in that factor. I just thought it made sense and the thing about this love triangle is it's sort of resolved in the second book I feel and so that's why I feel like it wasn't so all about the love triangle. Certain love triangles I have read about don't stop until the very last book in the series but honestly I felt that this love triangle sort of ended in the second book. And like I said I did root for one guy over the other and that one guy actually did end up being with Leah. I'm not gonna say who because spoilers but I do want to say that even though I wasn't rooting for the other guy that she didn't end up with, I did like his character nonetheless. One of my favorite things about this entire series is how it is told in multiple different POVs. Especially when it came to this first book, I remember when I first started off, I was sort of thrown off by the multiple different POV, but as I continued on, I realized that it actually gave the story substance. The next pro I have is the fantasy supernatural element throughout this entire series. I loved how that was sort of a slower build because in this first book we don't really see a ton of it, but then as the series progresses, so does the supernatural sort of aspect progresses and I think that was wonderful to see as well because it wasn't like wham bam there's all this fantasy it was just a slower build which was different but I love that. Then the final pro I have to mention is the world. Yet again this is a character driven and a world driven series I believe in my personal opinion. I think the world building throughout this whole entire series is just so wonderful to read about as you can see I'm smiling from ear to ear because I loved that factor and I really appreciated how it was very dense and how fluid it sort of was throughout this entire series. It's detailed but not too much to the fact that I feel like it was over my head. Finally I want to talk about the cons and honestly when I looked at this series as a whole I didn't really have a con that reflected on the entire series. I do want to mention the one con that I sort of said earlier for the last book and that is the fact that I felt these characters or certain characters in this book didn't really act their usual way and did actions that were completely out of their normal behavior and that sort of annoyed me in the factor so I do want to say that is a con for me and that's why my rating for this book is so weird because it was just a weird thing to do. But anyway, I did want to mention that as the con because honestly, as a whole, I have nothing bad to say about this series. If you have not picked up this series, I would definitely recommend to pick it up. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Let me know down below in the comment section if you have tried out this series and what you thought of it or just what you thought of my review. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!